Pastor, we're back. We're going to do another segment today on the Flavor Show. And today, uh, since we get into the end of the 2020 year, which has been a year like none other, uh, we're just going to do a little review. Uh, and uh, Since I got my man, uh, Will, spread love, Phelps with me, I'm just going to have him talk about these topic along with uh, Mr. Rhonda. So, uh, yeah, let's just jump into it, okay? Uh, 2020, uh, year review. This was a year like none other. I guess when what would shut down was like in March. Was, yes. So, uh, but it started crazy. It started in January with Kobe's death. It just started That's crazy. That's true. You're right. That 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 seemed like when everything seemed to go a little bit crazy and get out of hand. Uh, when Kobe, I can remember I, I was meeting with uh, Glenn and Jerry. Oh, okay. How about that? And uh, on the way home, uh, Jerry texts me like, "Hey, uh, did, was, did Kobe just die?" I'm like, man, you know, because I love Kobe. For those who don't know, I'm a great Kobe Bryant fan and a Los Angeles Laker fan. So, you know, I thought, you know, he was joking. You know what I mean? You know, quit playing jokes, man. You know, that's my man. And then I went to the internet and uh, saw it was true, man. So that just seemed to. That did set was, it off. Yeah. 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 I was I was having a party. We did our, our day party was on a Sunday. Okay. Getting yeah. the party like normal, you know, just grooving. And I'm looking at the TV, like, damn, really? Yeah. And so, uh, you know, it was just the year started off different. It did. It started off different. It did. Mm -hmm. I mean, it was it was something about that year. And then after that, so was it uh, in February? Was that uh, the Aubrey amount? Was that then? It was one of one of those things happened in February. And then the shut Maybe. shut down Maybe. came yeah. sort of after that. I mean, it was just like so many things that were just coming one after another. And then it was just like, uh, you can't go out your house. <laughs> you know? Don't shut down. Yeah, right. you know, don't, don't leave. You know, you have to stay home. And uh, so it was a new norm and learning how to adjust to it, you know. So how was it for, you know, the two of you, I guess, uh, in learning how to adjust to uh, the new reality of 2020? What changes did it affect in your life? I think the biggest thing for me, because I'm an educator, was when school shut down and you could not um, have kids in school anymore, face-to-face -face learning, you know. So it was a big adjustment, um, probably an adjustment that should have been taking place because education has been the same way for so long. And then when you have kids that are digital natives anyway, mm -hmm. that they learn better on um, technology. And so I hope they don't go back to what used to be because we found a better way to do it. So even if it's just a blend, it's a better way. So to do, do you this. think, so your thought is that it'll move more towards the technical? Uh... That's my hope. I mean, is that they come up with some solution where kids don't have to sit in a classroom for eight hours a day. Oh, okay. Yeah. So I guess the only thing about that that I think of is the problem that we faced before the shutdown is with the digital divide, right? Mm -hmm. Where uh, in our neighborhoods and in our communities, everybody is not connected. You know what I mean? Right. So I guess that still will cause a challenge. It will. And I'm not saying it has to be online. I mean, mm -hmm. maybe kids can do an internship for three hours a day. Okay. You know, in a field that they're mm -hmm. interested in. Or so you find education. something else to do. Yeah, education in general has to change. I like to blend it like you said. You know, we used to have that long time ago. You be in school. When I went to school, we had wood shop and all that stuff mm -hmm. for sure. me mm -hmm. was sure. a break from just the normal but not books. You know right. what I'm saying? You go to gym, you go to wood shop, you go to uh, Titan, you know, all that stuff with cooking. Yeah. 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 All that stuff was going on when I went to school. So it's like you said, it's blended. Yep, that was mm -hmm. the biggest thing for mm -hmm. me. How about for you in your uh, field, in your world, uh, you know, your your party promoter, and uh, how has 2020 been a change and how have you adjusted to, to keep things moving and along the right path? It's difficult. I would assume. It's difficult. Um, the one good thing about that I've had the experience with, I've had some people to trust in me. Okay. Really, it's a trust issue. Mm -hmm. um, people are still doing whatever they want to do. Sure. It's just if they trust That's it enough. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Don't think they ain't doing whatever they want to do. Mm -hmm. They're doing it. 
It's if they trust you. And especially with the party because they feel like the world is coming. Mm -hmm. They ain't been in 20,000 years, but they feel like the world is coming to that party. So, mm -hmm. you know, um, then it gets to be, and all of it's right. Well, however you handle this pandemic, it's right. If it's right for you. Right. There's you know no right, I mean? wrong or right. There's no wrong it's or bad. right. I don't blame anybody for not whatever it is going on with them. But, uh, yeah, it's it's difficult, man. And mm -hmm. the whole shutdown, though, I I lost some people. Mm -hmm. The whole shutdown, man, I needed it. Yeah. It was good for me. Yeah, I understand. I mean, because uh, it's been different. And it, it, it did in a lot of ways. Uh, in a lot of ways, it helped. It was a ripple. Yeah, it, it helped you refocus on what, yeah, on what you had to do. Yeah. So uh, it made you uh, refocus because... You know, you had you couldn't do anything else but take care of the business that you needed to that was going to move you forward because everything else was shut yeah. down. But it also made you realize what's important to you, you know. I always knew what was important to me, but I was so grinding, I didn't get a chance to enjoy, to enjoy it. it. You know, you know yeah, what I'm saying? So exactly. just being at home, being with the family and all that whole thing, I was gaining a bunch. I must have gained about 30 pounds. Oh, yes. Yeah. Yeah, that, that was but the man, initial. <laughs> that was the initial. We had a ball. I'm sorry. To say, I'm not trying to say anything about it. I did lose some people, mm -hmm. and I really yeah. was sad about that. Absolutely. You know what I'm saying? But otherwise, for me, having, being able to spend that time at home, spend that time with family was good for me. Yeah. I guess it was just... Uh, it changed things immediately. So, you know, a lot of people's initial response, you know, they went out and they bought uh, millions of dollars of toilet paper and uh, paper tissue, towel. which, yeah. you know, and uh, my whole response, uh, I think when we were talking earlier, I said, when I first heard about it, my first mindset was to say, oh, what can I do to make sure I'm healthy? You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Reinforce my uh, immune system, you know, what vitamin C, you know, I started drinking tea daily, you know. Those were the things that I was thinking of on how I can make sure that my body is prepared, you know, to to take on this. But, you know, it affected everybody in different ways, you know. But you just saying that, I can remember I went to grocery stores and produce was like in abundance. But they had the canned goods were gone. Yeah. Everything that was really bad for you was gone. Um, we stocked up on the wrong stuff. Yeah, right. Yeah, yeah. right. You know, and again, so as we see that at you know, the second wave, as they're mm -hmm. talking about now, approaching again. And we're getting to that point where you're starting to see the, the panic happening again. I'll never forget, this goes back further than the, uh, than the uh, pandemic. It was, you know, that 1999 wave. I was in, uh, I think it was Sam Club on a, in December. And I was seeing, like, people had uh, stockpiles of water, oh, yeah. rope. Because the world was going in. Because the world oh, was yeah, going exactly. in, you know. You needed all that water. Yeah, right, yeah. So, and again, I think a lot of what America does and what's an American way is is fear. to make yeah, fear panic. and panic. And they throw that out there and, you know. So, money can be made, man. It's all about oh, the absolutely. money. absolutely. You 100%. hit that nail on the head or the head mm -hmm. or whatever it is. You follow <laughs> the money, you'll find it all. And I think that's really, really what it is. So I'm wondering as we approach now, because, you know, you know, Thanksgiving, the day after starts the biggest uh, spending season for us. And, you know, with this shutdown for the next three weeks, I'm, I'm just seeing one. I really want to sit back and see how this plays out. I mean, you know, uh, will they open up the world because of, you know, they want people to go spend money again? Or is it serious? I enough? guarantee you they do. Yeah, I, I do too. And yeah, then it's a different dynamic nowadays, man. They, that online shopping. Oh, yeah. It, oh, yeah. it keeps the world open. Online keeps the world open. 24 7. 24 7. And so, it's close. It's going gonna, it's gonna to make, uh, you know, in person shopping almost obsolete. Mm -hmm. I mean, yeah, that's why malls are going out of business right now. Right now. Yeah. I mean, and it's, it's so sad because it, it affects, you know, the economy in so many other ways. They might, the stores might be making money, but. You know, you're losing employees, mm -hmm. you know what I mean? It's a trickle down, man. Yes, yes. Mm -hmm. And, you know, those are the jobs, unfortunately, that people that share the same skin hue as I and similar to mine, that we hold down. You know, mm -hmm. we're, we're in that service industry, and we're really losing that. So uh, it's really going to be a different time. It's really going to be a different time. I mean, uh, 2020 has been one that we'll never forget, that's for sure. Yeah, but people have to refocus, man. I mean... 
It can't be all this protest and all this uh, togetherness and something doesn't... And we have to refocus somewhere. Right. You know, and man, I'm telling you, this... this just have to refocus. So the protesters, again, that's a different thing that came out of 2020 yeah. that, were, that was on a different level than it, it had been, I think, at any other time before. I mean, uh, when you think about it, when you go back to the George Floyd, you had people all over the world. I mean, that was who were standing up in protest against what was done to a, a black man in America. And I don't know, I mean, you know, I'm sure everybody felt sad when we lost you know, people like Martin Luther King and mm-hmm. Malcolm X. And, but for a you know, regular Joe Blow you know, to die, a black man, and for people all over the world, all over the world, I mean, I'm not even exaggerating when I say that, you know, or even putting no hype on it, to stand up and say, hey, this has to stop. Now, I don't know how long this is going to last. I don't know if it's going to be the, the new way of thinking. I can only hope so. Yeah. But, uh, until they start convicting uh, some of these police officers and some of these white people for these crimes, I, to me, it's just all talk. You know, I don't know how y'all, y'all feel on that I topic. think that uh, I'm with Will. You know, we couldn't have been through this much and nothing changes. Uh, the power of the cell phone, the power of the camera. Yeah, I for think sure. that's what it is, is that people can't turn an eye to it when it's right there. Mm-hmm. You've seen it over and over. And we saw George Floyd, you know, begging for his life. And for eight minutes and 46 seconds. Wow. It's no different than, you know, um, Hitler. It's no different. All that stuff that was going on with the Jews, it's the same thing. Mm-hmm. You know, you, you can say that, you know, there was just concentration camps of people done at one time, but this has been a process, a 400-year process. With it. So it's been way more people. You do understand that. You for know what sure. I'm saying? So sure. at this point, because this has went on, I don't care if you're a black Republican, you know, Black Democrat, I don't care what you are. At this point, it's time to make things straight. Everybody see what's going on. Mm-hmm. For sure. Give us our reparations. For sure. Give it to us now. Mm-hmm. Give it to us now. And then once you get it, make a change. Yeah. And that's that's real. Uh because obviously in this past election it was very obvious that the black vote showed out yeah. and it swung the election in a way that uh that People, people had want not anticipated. Yeah, for I mean, sure. Right, right. So with that, I mean, you know, it should be something different. I mean, we should expect uh, those leaders who came in on our vote or came in because we supported them to support us in moving forward. That black vote not only helped Biden, it helped Trump, too. Trump wouldn't have been as close if he didn't have that black vote. 100%. On that side. I'm telling you. 100%. Yeah. A lot of black people. It was a people, lot of moment. For sure. A lot so, of people supported Trump yeah. in this election. That's why he was as close as he was mm-hmm. in the beginning. So uh, things just have to change. And w- the reason why I say reparations, ain't nobody going to be able to do nothing with no money. 100%. I don't give a shit how many policies you put 100%. in. If a person That's ain't true. got no money, they it can't do a right. damn thing. 100%. Excuse my language, but they can't do nothing. It's 100%. And that, that is the reality. And I, I agree with you wholeheartedly. Uh, you know, whatever form they decide it should be in, but uh, we got to do something. We got to do something. Cold hard cash. No ever. Uh. <laughs> cash. Cash. What the money? What the money? Right. Mm, cash. I'm with him. Hey, let's do it. Let's get this bread. Let's mm-hmm. get this bread. We can make a difference. This has been a great segment. Again, I love that y'all tuned in. This is the Flavor Network. This is the Flavor Show. Yo, this is where hip hop comes to life. Peace. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. All right. Mm-hmm.